Okay, by these two things, uh, uh, I say if any class is, is capable of displaying itself, if any, if all the classes actually are in this thing, we don't, we don't have any class that is not displayable. Everything is displayable in here. We don't have a business logic. Uh, what, what a business logic is are classes that are engine of your program. They do stuff, but they are not seen on a screen. So all the classes in here are actually visible, displayable, and, and readable from the console. What I meant was any class that you have that is capable of doing that, so if you have a class foo, and this class is supposed to be readable or writable, it means this class has OStream reference write, display, whatever you call it, I don't care, display, and it has an, uh, 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 an OStream reference OS coming in. If I can type it, and it's const returning OS. It has this function, and if it's reading, it has iStream read, scan, whatever you want to call it. Again, I don't care. iStream reference IS, const, and it returns IS. And I said, if these arguments are not provided, you have to set it by default to see out, and this one by default to see in. Why? Because if, if I want to, I want to be able to say foo f. This, these are public. I want to be able to say foo f and say foo dot display without writing anything in there. So it displays itself. That's all. So all things have these functions in them. Yes. No, in here, it's OS. So if you are printing something, you are doing OS whatever. No C out. If you do C out, you're ruining everything. You should not use C out inside display. That is the reason we have a reference for it. You learn soon what happens. Okay, so you cannot use C out inside display or C in inside read. In read, you can use C out. But in read, you cannot use C in. C in is IS over there, and that's it. C out is OS in there, and that's it. You cannot use C out in display or C in in read. If you do that, you're going to break the, the proper inheritance and proper upgrading of a function. You will see it soon. If you do that, it appears that it works. But when you go in higher degree of inheritance, suddenly you see your functions won't work anymore because they are not upgradable anymore. OK? Are we OK with this? So in English, when I'm saying O stream OS, it means anything that is O stream. Anything that is O stream. So any object that is a child of O stream will work with this function. But if you put C out in there, you're going to say, no, only C out, which means this function is not upgradable anymore. OK? So that's the explanation for that. Anything else? Forward declaration? The forward declaration was, OK, class dog. Class Fardad. Okay? I am my dog's friend, correct? So I have to say over here, friend, class Fardad, correct? Right? I can't do that because the class is coming after the dog. At this line, line 5, class Fardad is not created yet. Compiler doesn't know it. Because of that, 
I have to add a prototype before that, that we call it forward declaration. So in here, I have to say, hey, there is a class fardout coming. Don't worry about it. I'm introducing to dog, there is a fardout. It's your friend. I'm going to tell you what it is later. Just trust me. That is called forward declaration. If I don't put that fardout over there, at line 7, compiler doesn't know what a fardout is because it's divine, defined later. And that's forward declaration. Are we okay with this? So anytime you have the ownership, this happens. When a class owns another class, it becomes its friends, and that class becomes fully private. So only Fardad can do stuff with his dog, no one else. If it says come, only dog comes to Fardad and no one else. Okay? Pardon me? Yes. All right? So in our case, we have menu item in here and menu. Yes, and you have to forward declare it so menu item knows there is a menu coming up. I said it's not a good practice to use a friend as long as ownership is not involved. Having a casual friend is bad for your health in object orientation. Okay? As I told you, if you have too many friends, something gets lost in your house, everybody becomes a thief. Okay? That's what it is. Don't do that. Don't have friends unless ownership is involved. Okay? All right. Are we good? Any more questions about the project? They're okay? All right. So today we are going to talk about inheritance and understand what inheritance is, OK? We want to talk about inheritance and see what inheritance is. Inheritance is essentially, inheritance in object orientation is essentially what reusing your code is in structured programming. Well, let's see what the heck that means. Why do you write functions in C language, not C++? I'm talking C. Why do we co write functions? To be able to reuse our logic so we don't have to rewrite a usual task that we want to do over and over, correct? That's why we have functions in C language. Now, in C++, we don't have rogue functions anymore. Functions, hopefully, usually, are members of classes, correct? If a function is a member of a class, and I want to reuse those functions, what can I do? I can't do anything about it, right? So what happens is that functions in C++, they become part of your design, which means you create a class, you, may, you, tell, you say this class is encapsulating these features, which means I am creating a bottle, for example, and I'm sorry, I'm creating a container, okay? I create a container. Container's job is to be able to contain something, correct? It has volume, it has capacity, I can put things in it. That, that, that container could be, I don't know, uh, a barrel of nuts, okay? But it's a container. It has a volume. It, ha it can hold stuff. Then I will say, OK, I want to have a bottle of water, or I, ha I want to have a bottle. Should I really start creating everything from scratch? No, I'm going to say no. A bottle is a container that holds liquid. And I do not need to specify that it has a volume. I do not need to specify that it has a capacity, because a container by nature, has a capacity, has a, has a maximum limit of accepting things. So the, water, the bottle becomes like that. Then, now I have a bottle. I can make a beer bottle. I can make a Pepsi can out of that bottle, because can is an aluminum type of bottle. So I can go through it that way. So, I do not, so all these bottles are going to contain liquid now. I do not need to specify I have a bottle, and I know a bottle is job is to hold liquid. So if I create a wine bottle, 
that bottle is specifically designed for wine, so it cannot, ex so it won't accept light, and it's going to be able to keep wine for. So, and if I'm having a Pepsi can, that ca Pepsi can becomes a bottle that is made out of can, and it can be only opened once. So, as you see, you reuse your design. So, reusing design is essentially called inheritance in C++. A class doesn't exist until you instantiate it, correct? So I can say automobile, and I can say Fardot's car. Fardot's car is an automobile, correct? Can I improve Fardot's car's design? No, it's already done. It's a car, it's built, finished. It is what it is, I cannot make any changes to it. Yeah, I can change the rims and, I don't know, change the paint and stuff like that. But those are attributes. Those are not, if I have a Toyota, I cannot make it a Hummer two days later. <laughs> I can't do that. That my car is a Toyota Corolla, it's, a, it's done, finished, done. I'm done with it and it's my car. I cannot improve it, but the car by itself as a class, something that I build a car out of it, can be improved to more, to, to better things later on. So the design, you can inherit. The class, you can inherit. The object is not inheritable. It doesn't make sense. What we have as inheritance in real life is not the same thing as uh, what we have in object orientation. I did not inherit anything from my father in an object-oriented world. If I believe in evolution, I inherited something from mammals. That is understandable. I wasn't like, I, like if, I don't know, I, well, I was a Neanderthal or whatever you call it. And it, it becomes like that. It, so that's what, that's what inheritance is. Inheritance is to classify things. So I can have a vehicle, I can have a motorcycle, car, or a bus. That can be done. But as soon as I have, I don't know, Jack's motorcycle, it's done. It cannot be improved. It's finished. Objects are not inheritable. Designs are. What are designs? Designs are classes. Objects are classes that are instantiated. So how do we do that? How do we actually in, in, do inheritance? Um, to do this, to actually give you the example for it, what I have done was creating series of classes to kind of explain how things work. Take, for example, an animal. An animal can have a name. Right? Some kind of an animal. And that animal can get instantiated. I can have an animal. And that animal, I can set its name. I can get its name. Correct? And I can make that animal act. So each animal acts in a certain way. Correct? An animal makes moves in a certain way. Snakes move in certain way, fish move in certain way, birds move in different ways, lions move in different So they all move, but they have their own type of move, right? And they make different sounds. Each animal has its own. So I'm going to, I'm categorizing for me, an animal is encapsulated that way. So what happens is that I'm going to implement my animal. I'm going to say creating whatever the animal. And so that's my constructor. And uh, I can get its name. I can set its name. It's overloaded. And I'm, doing, I'm starting with underline over here. This is an old code. So at the time, I used to go underline something, not M underline. So fix that, please. Anyway, so I thought I fixed it, but I can see I did not. Anyways, uh, uh, so that's the name. I'm setting this. So if name is not named with anything, it's going to call it nameless. And it's going to say uh, act like animal, move like animal, sound like animal. And when the animal is going out of the soap, it says removing something the animal.
So essentially, if I uh, uh, look at this animal of mine, this is what I'm going to have. Okay? I can have uh, an animal. Okay? So animal A is, uh, I can actually create it in two different ways. Either uh, calling the constructor with one argument. Again, assignment at the moment of creation is not an assignment operator. It's a constructor with one argument. Assignment at the moment of creation, initialization, is not an assignment. Initialization is a call to a constructor with one argument. What is the type of the argument? The type of the thing that is, is being assigned to. Okay? So essentially, it creates it uh, like that. So A will have the name Buffy, and B will have uh, nameless. So if I have B over here, If I run this program, you'll see what's going to happen. It's, you, you know what's going to happen. It's going to be a, a essentially saying, creating Buffy the animal, creating nameless the animal, act like animal, move like animal, sound like animal, act, and they're all the same, OK? And end of main, removing nameless the animal, removing Buffy the animal. Why in reverse order? Remember, everything that you create gets pushed into a stack. So first, A is created. So A is at the bottom of the stack, and then B comes at the top. Therefore, when they are dying, E dies first and A dies last. Everything gets destroyed in reverse order. Remember that, okay? And whenever you don't remember, remember the, the plates in the kitchen, okay? If you have 10 plates and you're only two people living in a house, and you're clean people, you wash your dishes regularly, most likely you never use the 10th dish, 10, 10th plate at the end because you always put the uh, last one at the top and therefore you pick the last one and it's the exact same thing in classes so when the classes are created it exa they exactly get destroyed in a reverse order remember that okay so that's uh, creating an animal now if I want to let me put these over here Now I want to look at that animal in a different way. Oops. Sorry. I... All right. I, I'm having these in separate solutions because I want I want you to be able to execute them one by one and play with them, okay, and uh, do stuff with them. So that's why they are separate solutions, they're separate uh, projects. So add new pro uh, existing project, and this one we're going to add, this time we're going to add cat. Now, what if I want to have a cat? A cat is a type of animal, right? So if I look at the cat, Cat is an animal that has number of lives, right? Cat has nine lives, right? By default, <laughs> correct? So if that's the case, if that's the case, uh, I can say cat is an animal that has certain number of lives. Do I need to add a name for it? Not anymore. With that syntax that you see, cat, scope a uh, cat column public i am saying cat is an animal that whatever which means anything that had an animal had a cat will have it so if i look at these two cat will have a name that is 41 in length although i'm not mentioning it i'm just telling that the cat will inherit everything from an animal. It will inherit how to set its name, 
it will inherit how to act, how to move. You can always make the actions different, make the, uh, the methods, the behavior of the cat different. So if I think an, a cat acts differently, I can actually set that up. So I can simply say an act, a, a cat acts playfully, okay? But an animal just acts like an animal. Therefore, by overriding, this is not, if please be careful in here, the child, the derived class cat that is inheriting from animal overrides the action, the, the, proper, the, the functions of the animal. It's not overloading. Overload was when you had two functions with the same name and different arguments. In here, the two functions are identical. Essentially, the action of cat hides the action of the parent. OK? And therefore, it overrides it. Now, as you see, I'm saying cat doesn't have a move. So cat doesn't move, OK? Cat doesn't have its own move. It gets the move as its parent. So if we go to implementation of it in cat.cpp, I'm going to just comment the, the move over there. So the move of cat is not going to do anything. OK? Now, if I actually look at this, let me just take this off. So. Let's take a look. When a cat is getting created, the default is not nameless anymore. If you're old as me, you know who Garfield is. But uh, I could have called it Tom, probably. That would be make, make sense for everyone. Let's make it Tom. OK? Then we're going to create a mouse, call it Jerry. But anyways, so the default value of a cat, it's going to be Tom. It's not going to be nameless. So if I actually create a cat uh, create a cat let's see what happens i'm going to create a cat by default and go through it and see what happens so let's walk through this oh i have to change the sorry it's executing a previous one so i have to set this as startup project now so any project you want to get focused you uh Set that one as startup project. So let's run it again. All right, so the cat is getting created. When it wants to get created, because it doesn't have uh, uh, any value set, the default values that is Tom and 9 will be called. So I'm going to go to the constructor of cat. But when I'm creating the cat, how do I pass this to the, to the parent, the mother, to whatever you call it, to the, to the animal? I want the animal to get this name. Nothing happens by magic. If I, want, if I want the cat to pass the name to its animal side, I have to explicitly mention, hey, invoke the constructor of animal and pass the name to it. This area, what did we call it? Remember this? What was the name of that area? What did I call that area? Anybody remembers that? I told you in front of the constructor of any class, that area is called Shame on you. It's called initialization area. So anything you want to initialize, you put it over there. That is the only place, and I cannot put enough stress on it, that is the only place you can invoke or call a constructor. At any other place, if you put a constructor, it will just create a temporary nameless class and click kill it. I'll show it to you. OK? So what happened over here, I'm saying, cat, get your name. Pass that to your parent that's an animal. So name over here will get the name and pass it to the animal. 
and then I'm going to initialize the number of lights to the number of lights that is coming that is 9. So if I walk through this, you will see that it immediately jumps to the parent side, set the name to Tom, correct? Give me two seconds, I'm going to answer you. Then it's going to say creating name the animal, which is Tom the animal. It's the animal side that is getting created. Then it goes back to its constructor, of course, initializing number of lives. Then it's going to say creating Tom the cat. So anytime you are creating Tom the cat, Tom the animal is created underneath. Anytime we are creating a cow, a mammal is getting created. Anytime I'm creating a monkey, a mammal is created. Anytime I'm creating a human, a mammal is created because these are these all belong to the category of mammals. Yes. Yeah, yes, yes. So what I mentioned over there that the initialization area is a place where you can actually put stuff to make the compiler build your object with those values as initial values. So, so if you don't put it in there, first it's going to be garbage, then it's going to be, then it's going to be the value that you have. We'll go through it in a second. I'll explain it to you in a second. So, so it created the, the Tom the animal, Tom the cat, they are the same. Don't, two objects did not get created. Don't, don't forget about this. It's just the message is getting printed twice. So first an animal got created, the name was set to Tom, then the cat was created over it with number of lives to nine. There are not two names. Cat, animal, they are the same object. Okay? So now, now that the animal is created, I'm going to say cat, act. So because cat has an action, it goes to the action of cat instead of action of the animal. It overrides the action of animal. You improve your design. You want your design to do things differently. My father was a teacher. He used to teach mechanics. I am teaching computer science. Very bad example. I told you that it doesn't happen like that, but let's put it that way. If I inherited the teaching from my father, my teaching is different. I teach computer science. But if you go back and call me as Mr. Soling Manlu instead of Fardad, then I'm going to teach you mechanics. Careful. Okay, that's why I always say don't call me by my last name. I'm going to go bananas, right? You have to call me Fardad if you want to get computer advice, right? That's what happens over here. So in this thingy, if I say act when I'm calling a cat, so this C over here is what? Is a cat. When I say cat, act, it's going to go to the action of cat. What did I do? What happened? Something is not working. Uh, OK, I'm going to stop it and run it again. Sorry, my, my F10 key didn't work for some reason. Let's do it one more time. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. So I was here, so we created that. So we created Tom the, the animal and the Tom the cat and yada, yada, yada. Now I'm going to go F11 to go inside cat, cat's act. And it comes over here and says, act playful, therefore act playful Tom the cat. Okay, the animal part is not called at all. But now I go to move. When I go to move, I say cat, move. Cat doesn't have a move. I did not implement any move. Problem? No, because the parent, the animal, has a move, right? Therefore, it's going to say, no problem. I'm going to go to the action that I inherited from the parent. Therefore, I'm going to go there and move like an animal, not like a cat, because cat doesn't, didn't improve the movement of the animal. Therefore, it goes out, 
And now if I say make a sound, it actually says meow. Are we okay with this? So the actions that are improved at this moment are the act and the sound, but move is not improved. Therefore, that's what you see. Are we okay with this? Now, please go home and start commenting things, add stuff, walk through it and see how it happens. Okay? Now I'm going to show you the problem that you will, that we always have. I keep screaming about it and nobody ever listens. Let's do that now. I want to make the mistake intentionally. So in here, in the cat thingy that I have the main, I'm going uh, to I'm going to save this. Uh, where is my oh, uh, where is my main? So I'm going to call this as good main. CPP. Okay. Now I'm going to go in oh, um actually not that. Sorry, not good main. Uh, let me go to cat. Uh, I'm going to call it good cat. <laughs> good cat. And I'm going to remove the good main. Because poor main doesn't know what's going on. I'm just going to remove that one. Good car. Sorry, guys. I, you don't know what's going on. I, like, I'm, I'm going bananas here. My apologies if you see some crazy stuff happening today. I don't feel good at all. So but my apologies. So good cat. Good cart. Okay. Good cat. So I'm going to remove the good cat and I'm going to bring the bad cat up. And, and I'll tell you what the, what's going to be the mistake. So the mistake is this. I'm going to say, OK, I can set the number of lives in here, correct? And remove the initialization. So for a moment, number of lives will have garbage, but then it's writ overwritten by 9, correct? No difference, correct? So when I run this, uh, do I have removing yada yada the cat? In here, I'm going to say with uh, with number of uh, what is that? Yeah, no. Number of lives left. Okay, so. So now if I run this, you will see that it's perfectly OK. And it works exactly like the other one. So created the cat, meow, uh, removing the cat with nine lives left. And of course, it's going to then remove its animal side. It's one object, but both has to die, right? When you have a two-story building, you demolish it, both floors are going to be gone. It's the same thing. It's a cat built off over an animal. So when you uh, kill a cat, the animal dies too. All right? So now take a look at this. Now I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to do the same thing. Let the animal has, have garbage for a second, and I'm just going to call it over here. Right? OK? Now see what happens. It's going to be a little freaky. Oh, builders, new. Oh, uh, so five, one more time. What's going on here? Redefinition of, am I making a boo-boo here? Let me pause it and see what about anyways. If by mistake you do that and it's gonna compile, like this is right, something is terribly wrong. I mean I have to go find out what the heck happened. Okay, but if by mistake you explicitly call a constructor, now you see I'm saying when a cat got created, name the name the animal part whatever. Okay? And I think that I'm actually calling the constructor. You are not really calling the constructor here. 
What happens is that at line 12, it's going to create a temporary nameless animal and kill it immediately. So again, constructors are only to be called at the initialization area for the call to happen. If I do it like this, this is what happens. Let me uh, run it. Very strange. So yeah, it, it's creating a cat, right? So it comes over here, and the name over here has Tom, right, by default. So we expect that the, name, the, the animal is going to be called Tom, right? But because we didn't mention in the initialization area what the animal is going to be, it's going to call the default constructor of animal and name it nameless. It's even if you don't mention in here to call the constructor of the parent of the base class, if you don't mention it, it will call the default one. So now the animal you thought is going to be called Tom, it's called nameless. But what happens to this? So essentially what happens is that when it gets in here, so it actually says nameless the animal, it sets the number of lines to nine. When it comes to here, it essentially at line 12 creates a temporary nameless animal called whatever in this case. And immediately, because there is no use for it, immediately kills it. Look, remove. And comes over here. So when you see, you see it creates nameless animal, then creates whatever and kills it immediately afterwards. So remember, you can never, ever call a constructor. Constructors are not callable. You think you are calling it, but what you are actually doing is creating a nameless object and immediately killing it. So if you want to call the constructor of a parent when you are creating a child, you must always, always, always call it in the initialization area, which essentially means create, initialize my parent. When I am created, initialize my parent this way. Did I get to you? Do we understand what happened? All right. So that's essentially what's happening here now. Now, uh, if we do it like this, it's fine. But if we put it down there, it was really weird. Anyways, yes. You cannot call a constructor. OK? You cannot call a constructor. What, what you're saying is that, what you're saying is this. Um, you are talking about setting objects to this safe empty state. When they say star this is equal to the name of the constructor, correct? You know what they are doing? They are creating a temporary nameless object and they are copying it over this object. So there is no call to a constructor there. They say when things go wrong, create a default object and overwrite me with it. There is no call to a constructor. It's an assignment operator being called. And that's the worst type of thing. I do not like that. That's why I always say, if you want to set empty, create a function set empty and call it, instead of saying star this is equal to something. And it's a very common thing. You will see it in a code. It happens all the time. But anyways, so that was the thing that didn't go right, but hey. Uh, I'm going to pause this.
it's always the same thing. So it's always in reverse order. When you think about it, if to build a cat, first you have to build an animal and a cat over it, correct? And then when you're deleting it, because cat is sitting at the top of the animal, first the cat part is gone, then the animal. Therefore, it's going to be in reverse order. Are we okay down to here? Are we okay? All right. Uh, another thing about initialization. So we have f different types of initialization and the sequence of things happening. Let's bring up the cat again and just tell you, um, yeah, tell you about the initialization and where you can do it. Um, so if I have cat.cpp, So, we know that this is the initialization area, right? This guarantees that number of lives will not have any garbage in it and immediately will get created with this value. We are okay down to that point, correct? In new C++, the latest version of C++, you can do this initialization right in the class definition. So instead of if I want to, like if I wanted the number of lives to be 8 by default, I could have put it over here. But the problem is that you can only put literal values over there. You cannot initialize it with another variable. So if I put over the number of lives, I could not put over their num of lives over there and set it to that value. If I want, like for example, you say, if you have a pointer, set it to null. Initialize it to null. You can do it in class definition. You can write equals to null PTR. My point is, the sequence of things happening. First, it's here. So when the class gets created, first these initializations happen. Then these initializations happen. That's number two. And third is going to be the one that goes in here. Number one and two. So this is first. So I'm going to put over here. So this is first. No, actually, it's okay. So this, is, this happens first. Let's, let me just gonna put one over here. So this is number one. Number two is here. Stuff over here happens as number two, but you have to be careful. What you put over here, the values you put over here, must have the same sequence as the properties you have here. So if you had integer a, b, c, if you had integer a, b, c in the class, in the initialization area, you have to initialize A, B, C in the exact same sequence. Otherwise, you're going to get a warning telling that, hey, when you're initializing, that thing is not going to have the, when the sequence is not right, you're going to get a, get a warning. If you are initializing in the initialization area, make sure the sequence of initialization in, in initialization area is the same sequence of the properties of the member variables that you have in the class. And number three is here. So this is the third one. And remember, this means garbage first. So anything that you think you are initializing within the constructor code means that if it's an object, it must have a default argument, default uh, uh, constructor. Otherwise, it won't work. Because first, it has to get created then set to something. If it first has to get created, it means it must have a default constructor. If it doesn't have a default constructor, the code won't compile. So number one, the initialization happens within the class. Number two, in the initialization area, then it's setting. It's not initialization anymore. Number three, sets the values. So in here is going to be setting, not initialization.
All right. This is the exact same thing. So I have the animal, and the animal has act, move, and sound. I have the cat, and the cat has act, move, and sound. Exactly the same thing. There is one difference over here. Look at the main. As I mentioned, Always. You can always refer somebody by their family name, right? You can always refer to a class by its parents' class. There is no problem with that. I can have, at line 7, create a cat called P, called Pepper, right? In the second line, I created a pointer of type cat that holds a new cat in it. I can do that perfectly. But also, I can create an animal pointer and keep a cat in it. There's nothing wrong with that. A cat is an animal, right? So a cat can be referred to, a cat can be referred to by an animal pointer or by an animal reference. Remember, derived classes can always be pointed by their parent's reference or pointer. And this creates a huge problem. As I told you, if you call me Mr. Soleil Manlu, I'm going to teach you mechanics. Because you are calling my father's trade, not me. I teach computer science. If you want to, 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 to learn computers, you have to call me for that. It's the same thing in here. If I have a pointer of type animal pointing to a cat, although the sound of a cat is meow, but because you are referring to it as an animal, it's going to sound like an animal, not a cat anymore. And even worse than that, I'll show you something. So let's go through all these things one by one and see what happens. OK? So, I'm going to uh, set this to a startup project. And compile and run it. OK, so creation is always the same. I'm creating the cat. Cat is created. Let me just uh, see if I can actually do this. I think it's better to have them both in picture so we can see what's going on. Oops. What did I do? Okay, I'm going to put it over here and start going over here. So, I have created the cat, no problem, correct? It's Pepper, and the other one is Fluffy, so I'm creating a cat, holding it in a cat pointer. So, C is a cat pointer, pointing to a cat. Pointer of type cat, object of type cat, perfect match. It's the exact same thing, all right? Third one, Tom is a cat, but the only handle it has is an animal. I am not pointing to Tom as a cat. I am pointing to it as an animal. When I create it, the creation is absolutely no difference. I created Tom the animal. Tom the cat got created too. Also, I can refer to a cat that already exists with an animal reference. So this AR that I have, the animal reference, is pointing to our good old pepper over there. Are you okay with this? Now let's see how the function calls are going to happen. I have a pointer of type cat. I am pointing to a cat. So I'm going to say cat act. 
obviously, it's going to act playful like the cat, correct? I'm going to say move. It's going to move like Fluffy the cat. And if I say make a sound, it's going to meow like a cat. Perfect. No problem. Now, he over here, let's actually do that. So in here, I'm going to say P, P, and P, and what am I saying? Uh, using cat reference. Let's see if it recompiles it. I hope it recompiles it so I don't have to go through it. It should recompile. So I go F10. Yeah, so using cat reference, P is a cat, right? Pepper. So it's going to say playful. Pepper is going to uh, act. Pepper is going to uh, uh, move like, uh, like a cat. And it's going to say meow, right? Now, AR is an animal reference to Pepper, correct? It's the same cat. But well, take a look. When I say act, it forgets that it was a cat. It is the same object. I am referring to the cat as an animal. But when I tell it to act, it doesn't act like a cat anymore. Why? Because the animal reference only sees the animal part of the cat. It doesn't see the cat part of the cat. So essentially, the rule says, the rule says, a reference or a pointer always points to the closest thing possible, unless. That unless is the next thing I'm going to talk about. For now, we are at that point. So a pointer or a reference always points to the closest action that it has. An animal reference calls the animal actions. And if I did not implement the move, I would have gotten a syntax error, a, a problem in here when I wanted to call. Because it says, if I didn't have a move for the, for the cat, if I said A or move, it would have said, hey, I don't have a move. How do I move? It can't do it. So if cat added an action that the animal didn't have, I would have gotten a syntax error. But anyways, so again, it's going to move like an animal and sound like an animal. And the exact same thing hap happens with the animal pointer. But there is a problem in here, people. Now take a look at the problem. Yes? Pardon me? When, when you're t uh, dealing with it as an animal, it's completely lost. It doesn't know that there is number of lives. OK? It does not know there is any number of lives anywhere. So actually, let's do this. Like, Thank you for, for mentioning it. So I'm going to go to. Uh, uh, cat.cpp, um, and removing the cat with um, just to see uh, lives, OK? So I'm right down to here. I'm going to stop it and run it again, just to have those things uh, included. There you go. Now it actually, so when it comes to the structure, now we're going to see what, what's going to happen. OK? So now, so please pay attention to this point. At line 20, I am calling action of a cat who was created using reference of a cat, right? So the cat was created as a cat with a reference of a cat. In the second one, the cat was dynamic. But the pointer it was kept at was a cat's pointer, correct? 
The third one, I, I created the cat dynamically, but I have no reference of a cat to it. It is a dynamic cat, but the only handle I have for it is an animal pointer. So what's going to happen? Let's take a look. First of all, we suspect it's going to work as we suspect. So it's going to act like an animal as if there is no cat. But take a look at this. When I actually want to delete C, what's going to get deleted? I'm saying delete C. What is C? C is a cat pointer, correct? Therefore, it wants to kill the cat and it's going to remove Fluffy the cat with nine lives and remove Fluffy the animal. Both parts are gone, right? For the other one, I'm going to say delete. For the other one, I'm going to say delete animal pointer. Delete is not aware that the target is an animal. Delete C said that the target is a cat. Delete C is an animal. So the only thing it deallocates is the animal. So if I actually run this, you'll see it's because removing Tom the animal. What happens to Tom to the cat? What happened to the number of lives? They are left in memory. It's a memory leak. What the heck? That's bad. So what if I, if the compiler is allowing me to do that, then we're going to have lots of memory leak. So what can we do to fix the problem? That brings us to the next thing. Please go through these things again. Walk through them. Pardon me? It's, it's very simple. It's, I'll, I'll tell you very, very, very easily, okay? If you have a small cup of coffee and a big cup of coffee, you can, you can always hold the small cup of coffee underneath and hold it over there, right? You see a rim there. So, so small cup of coffee is always uh, has a holder that can hold the big one. It can't fit the whole thing. But the rest is holding the extra coffee that you have. So you can always hold the small coffee under a big coffee and hold it. It's beautiful. When you tell, but well, when you, in, a, in computer science, that upper part that comes out of the coffee, it's not visible for the compiler anymore. So what happened to the compiler to say, you have a big chunk of memory, that chunk of memory has two parts, a base and a derived. When you refer to this with a derived pointer, compiler has a narrow vision. The only thing it sees is the base part. Therefore, when you say delete, it says, sure, no problem. Hoop picks up that part. And the rest of the coffee goes everywhere. <laughs> a memory leak, coffee leak over here, right? So it literally picks that part, and the rest will go everywhere. We don't want that to happen. So, and that brings us to the next part. That brings us to the next part. So try to kind of digest what happened. Now just give me two seconds. Let me see what I have here. Save. I just want to bring the exact same thing up. And then, well, so. I'm going to copy the exact same main in here. Copy. Paste. Save it. There we go. 
All right, so let's close everything. And add another project to this. Set as startup project. Let's open them up. So I have the, the animal. I have the cat. Uh, let's bring the sound in. I want it to be exactly the same thing as the other one. And uh, the uh, cat over here, I'm going to take this away too. There we go. And in here is going to be with... Okay, so it's identical to the other one, right? So if I run this, it's going to be exactly the same thing. You're going to see that uh, 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 it literally let the uh, Tom, the animal over here. So I have the memory leak and everything. Let's start with actions before we do anything. I'm going to bring the animal up. Okay, and the main. Uh, for, first one is a cat, is it this one, your seven you're talking? Yeah, that's cat pointer. So again, <clears throat> remember, this is very important. An object of a class and a pointer of the same type, turn your brain off. Everything is going to work normally. A cat referred to as a cat. A cow refers to a cow. cow. A car refer refers as a car. Uh, an airplane refers as an airplane. Good. Nothing to worry about. A man refers as human. Think. A woman refers as human. Think. A cow referred as mammal. Think. An airplane referred as a flying object. Think. As soon as you see, as soon as you see an object is being referred to with its base pointer or reference, flags go on. Immediately you have to pay attention. To what? I hate teaching mechanics. I want you to, even if you call me as Mr. Soliman Lu, I still want to teach computer science. I want to force that. I could have. If my father told me, hey son, the act of teaching, always improve it. Don't take mine as the one that you want to do. Assume that my teaching is not the real one. Your teaching is, not, is the real one. Mine is the fake one. What is unreal in virtual science? Virtual uh, in, in <laughs> I kid. What is unreal in computer science? It's called virtual. So anything that you call virtual, it means replaceable. It means not real. It means fake, second hand. If an animal says, hey, my action is not the real one. Okay? If I can type it correctly, virtual, whatever that is, <laughs> virtual, okay? Okay? So if the, the animal says, my action is virtual, as soon as it says that, when the compiler sees, okay? When the compiler sees, an animal pointer or reference is being used, immediately looks, oh, action is virtual. Let me see if I am referring to a child, a derived class out of animal. If that's the case, is there an improvement? 
I'll call that. So if I actually make the action virtual, take a look at this. When I run it, no matter how I refer to a cat, always the playful cat is going to come up. When I refer to it with an animal reference, it moved like an animal. When I referred it with an animal pointer, it moved like an animal. But if I make the move virtual, see what happens. Oh, somebody fix my brain. See what happens? Then it always moves like a cat, no matter how you refer to it. And that's the interview reply to what is a virtual function. Remember this. It's going to come up into your co-op interview. It's going to come up in the interview you're going to have for your work. What is a virtual method? What is a virtual function? You have to say a virtual function, virtuality, guarantees that always the latest version of a function or method is called. Virtuality guarantees that the latest version of a function is called. And that makes everybody shut up. That's a perfect answer, which means I made act move virtual over here, correct? Let me, let me make everything virtual. Oh, uh, by the way, remember about the destructor that it didn't destroy the cat properly? Look, I'm going to make the destructor virtual, the destructor of the animal. Now if I run it, because it says destroy the animal, and it's the virtual animal that is being destroyed, virtual uh, destructor is called, it checks. Is there another destructor at the top? Yes, I'm going to call that one first. And now if you look at it, Tom is not being removed only as an animal, but the cat one is removed first. So remember, from now till the day you die, you create a destructor, you make it virtual. A destructor that is not virtual, it's wrong. Because if it's, if the class is not inherited, then who cares? Virtuality doesn't even come in play. So virtuality, when you see the keyword virtual, look for inheritance. If there is no inheritance, who cares? Don't even look at virtual. Virtuality doesn't come in action. Virtuality comes in action only if you have a derived class. If you don't have a derived class, who cares? If my father didn't have a child, who cares? It's always mechanics. Yes. Oh, we'll go through that. Soon. Very soon. Baby steps, my friend. Virtuality is transitive. Virtuality is transitive. If you, if you have levels, if I have, if I have a grandfather, father and a son or a daughter or a grandmother, mother and a daughter, if I have that scenario, if the first one is virtual, everything becomes virtual after that. So if after the cat, okay, I have a lion over there, if, assuming the cat is a lion, or if we have a bird, and then we have a baji over there. If the, virtual, if the action is virtual, then the action of a bird becomes virtual, the action of a baji becomes virtual. So it's like that. So it's transitive. Everything after that becomes virtual, yes. You don't do it, or you only do it once. Only the grandparent, only the base class is virtual. The rest is automatically virtual. You don't need to mention it. We'll come to it soon. Like if this, this animal thingy that you see that I have over here, now I'm like three projects. Three. I create, like if you go to nine, so I created nine of them. I created the whole animal kingdom with the fish and the things. They're, they are like big hierarchy of animals over there. You can trace it over there and you'll see what happens. But virtuality is transitive. 
which means if the base is virtual, everything after that is virtual. And remember that. Again, remember that. Virtuality only works for functions that overwrite in each other, not overload. Beautiful question for final exam. What is the difference between overload and overriding a function? Overload means a function have different types of parameter lists to be called. Override means a function is rewritten in its derived classes. You have the exact same function, it's overwritten with other stuff. Are we okay with this? Overload, same function, different arguments. Override, identical functions in the hierarchy of inheritance. Now take a look. Let's say everything in the animal is virtual. The act, the move, the sound, everything virtual. If I do this and I run this beautiful program of mine, oh, oh, what is wrong with me today? OK. Virtual, seriously. OK. <laughs> uh, I got to take a break. All right, so now take a look. Everything is cat, no animal involved. But what if cat doesn't improve a method that is not, that is virtual? What if my cat doesn't have a, an act? If my cat doesn't have an act, what's going to happen? Will I get an error? I'm saying virtual. Do I get an error? No. It is virtual, but if you don't improve it, then the animal stands. The exact same thing, no difference. <clears throat> so the, it's going to act like an animal, no problem. Are we OK with this? And I'm going to end with one, th one thing today, <clears throat> which is the next one. <laughs> Copy. and paste. Sometimes, sometimes, when you are designing the class, when you are designing a class, you are sure that something's going to happen, must happen, but you don't know how. Humans can walk, right? A human can walk. Correct? Human can walk like this, or human can walk like this. Depending on being a lady or a gentleman. Or talk like this, and talk like this. Depending on, so I cannot, or even better, a human can talk. But can you take, tell how until you know what the nationality is? Am I, talk, am I going to talk? English, Mandarin, Arabic, Chinese, Chinese is wrong, Cantonese, something like that. I don't know, right? So human can talk. So what do I do? Do I, make, do I create a function for human called talk? But if I create a talk, then I have to know what the language is, and I cannot implement it. When you have a method, when you have a function in a class that you know it has to exist, but you don't know how, you still don't know how to implement it until further inheritance is happening, until a human becomes a man or a woman, and after that becomes a Turkish man or a Chinese woman. And then you can decide. Now, not even Chinese, and then over there you have to go which part of China, which language it's going to be. So you have to finalize it, get to the level of inheritance, and at that moment, for certain, you can say, talking is going to happen like this. That's when it's going to impl uh, get implemented. If you are doing something like this, then what you are going to have will be, oh, hold your breath. <laughs> 
uh, add. What you are going to have will be something like this. I know an animal can act, but I still don't know how. That's why you say virtual void act equals to zero. And then inside the CPP file of animal, you are not going to have any type of act function, which means act must exist. I don't know how yet. When you improve, so these are classes, and because of that fact, you cannot create an animal anymore. If I ask you to create a sculpture of an animal, can you do that? No, because it's not final. You don't know what type of animal I'm talking about. I have to finalize everything until you can actually instantiate it into an object. It's the same thing with this. These type of virtual functions are called pure virtual functions. Functions that you know they have to exist sometime, but still don't know how. And any class who holds a pure virtual function cannot exist. It has to get completed by inheritance. I have to inherit an animal to, to a cat, and in that cat I'm going to say, act like this. Now, if I actually look at the code, you will see that if you try to create an animal, it's going to give you an error. If I compile now, everything works perfectly because they're all cats, right? And it's going to compile and work and it, and it runs and everything's beautiful. But if I actually try to instantiate an animal, it's going to tell me, hey, what are you doing? An animal is... Object of abstract class type animal is not allowed. An abstract base class cannot get instantiated. Abstract base classes are classes that they have ideas who are not materialized yet. And a class that is only an idea, which means you write a class, and you create, you know, this type of thing should be able to do this and that and that. But you don't know any of them, which means your class has only pure virtual method and nothing else. If you have such a class, that class is referred to as an interface. It doesn't matter as C++. C++, internet, interface, abstract-based class, potatoes, potatoes. If you only have one pure virtual method, your class is rendered abstract. You cannot create an instance out of it until you inherited something and materialize those actions. But if you, by chance, have a class that has only pure virtual methods in it, then what you, you call that abstract-based class an interface. Okay? Just remember that. But that's it. That's all you need to know down to this point. So um, I actually have an example of an interface and everything over there too. Uh, I'm going to put, put them all over it. So I'm going to put all these things on for you. So the nine, there are nine uh, uh, projects. Each of them is, so the last one is, uh, uh, is with uh, overloading and everything. So it's like, I'm going to put them all up. So let me see if, uh, I don't know how many classes I went down to this point. So, so, so the one that I'm going to put is going to be an animal, bird, bodgy, cat, goldfish, pet. So it's like lots of different things over there that you can go through the hierarchy of inheritance and see how things work. Okay? So go through that, play with it, change the messages, remove functions, add functions, see how things work to understand exactly how inheritance is. Now, for the quiz that you are going to have, don't run too quickly. Don't run too quickly. You got you to you hear this. 
Okay. <clears throat> so you see this? Abstract base classes, virtual functions, all gone. Okay? So you have uh, number nine. So eight derived classes, functions in hierarchy, abstract base classes, virtual functions. Week eight and nine, two weeks gone. Okay? You have to go through it. We're going to have questions on those. Probably you're going to do two quizzes. You're coming in. Okay? Yes. Friday. Uh, probably one. Or uh, I'll, I'll, uh, probably one. Uh, it's better to have one, and one per week. I think that's better. I don't want to put too much pressure. But I don't know. Who knows? If I see it's not enough. Yeah. Anyway, so when I say quiz, I mean question. You know what I mean, right? So you, you probably have one question or two questions. I'm going to post all these things and you'll see. So let's.